And we keep things rolling here on the Sports Cubicle. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. And we have a bunch of news notes we have to hit on because it was a busy week on and off the field. And I want to start off with some news that hit from the north side of Chicago. Of course, we've been talking about what the Cubs did and didn't do during the trade deadline. We had friend of the show from Cubby's Crib and from the mothership at Heartland Signal, Rich Eberwine, to break it all down. But the Cubs did make a pretty big and interesting move. This comes to us from the Athletics' John Greenberg. Cubs Motorola signed multi-year sponsorship deal for the team's first jersey patch. The Cubs made an under-the-radar addition at the trade deadline, and it probably won't make fans happy. Chicago-based communication company Motorola and the Cubs agreed to a multi-year deal for a uniform patch and for the company to be the official smartphone of the team. The deal was agreed upon around Tuesday's trade deadline and was announced this past Thursday. The Cubs unveiled their classic pinstripe jerseys with the uniform patch for Thursday's home game against the rivaled St. Louis Cardinals. The article continues from John Greenberg over at The Athletic. Terms of the deal weren't disclosed, but Cubs chief commercial officer Colin Faulkner told The Athletic that it puts the team in, quote, the upper end of MLB deals and is commensurate with the team and market. 23 MLB teams have uniform patch deals, and the biggest ones are believed to be the Yankees and Blue Jays in the low to mid $20 million range annually, and the Red Sox are close behind at around $17 million. An industry source told The Athletic the league average for the patches is around $7 million to $8 million a year. This is Motorola's second patch in baseball. The Padres have the other, and it's second in Chicago as the company also sponsors the Bulls jersey. While that patch has a black background and white M, the Cubs version will have the team's colors, The Cubs asked for that in their negotiations. Not every potential sponsor agreed. Quote, we took great care at selecting our partner. Cubs Executive Vice President of Corporate Sponsorship, Alex Seffrith, told The Athletic. They are a Chicago-based company, and that was important to us. The logo will be Cubs colors, and that was important to us. For the home pinstripes and road grays, the logo will have a blue background with a white M. The alternate blue jerseys will have a white background with a blue M. And the City Connect jerseys will have a white background with a navy blue M. And you can check out the rest of this very interesting article over at The Athletic. Support The Athletic. They do amazing work over there by John Greenberg. Cubs, Motorola, signed multi-year sponsorship deal for the team's first jersey patch. So I know a lot of Cub fans are going to be upset about this. But it's just the way of the world. It's just the way of the sports world. And the simple fact that the Cubs found a way to make it somewhat classy, that it doesn't look so gaudy, so tacky, that it blends pretty seamlessly with the jerseys already, I think is just all the best to them. And if anything, if this is a way that it invests in the team, in the facilities, in the roster, in the amenities, in everything that matters besides your ticket sales going up, I'm here for it. Look, and we've talked about it forever now at this point here on the Sports Cubicle. Sports is now a business beyond just winning. It's about real estate. It's about ownership. It's about trademarks. It's about value. It's about marketing and merchandise and so on and so forth. And this is a way where if they can make extra money, they're going to. And if it's a way in which they're not making your ticket prices any higher than they already are, or the beer prices that are already crazy, or the popcorn or the water or the hot dogs, or it doesn't matter. It's already crazy expensive. But if this is a way for them to make extra money to hopefully benefit the team, and it doesn't go into your pockets, it's just the way of the world. And I think Cub fans, I think sports fans that hold these things to a pedestal that kind of give them this totem and make them these figures, these uh, these monuments of religion for them that become their identity. Wrigley Field, the original sponsorship, by the way, the first sellout, it's named Wrigley for God's sake, but let's say you're just sacred. It's hollowed grounds. You don't call it anything but Wrigley. Ladies and gentlemen, at some point, it's going to be called Motorola Presents Wrigley Field. 
Verizon presents Wrigley Field. Hell, one day it might just be called T-Mobile Field. That's how these things go. What do you think Soldier Field is going to be called in Arlington Heights? These things are just names. They're just places. They're just banner space. It's just real estate to make money. But if you are one of these people that the jersey is this sacred thing that shall never be dispersed and putting a logo onto it defiles what it is. Unfortunately for you, those days are long gone. And if you are a Kofen, it could have been a whole lot worse. And it could have looked a whole lot worse. But we want to know your thoughts. What do you think about Motorola now being the first sponsorship to have a patch on the Chicago Cubs. Check out the article we reference over at The Athletic by John Greenberg. Cubs Motorola signed multi-year sponsorship deal for the team's first jersey patch. Let us know your thoughts. We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. Subscribe to us on YouTube at The Sports Cubicle. And of course, search us everywhere at Sports from the Couch, The Sports Cubicle. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. And another New story that hit the Chicago Newswire that got a bunch of people happy, especially Bears fans. This comes to us from ESPN, Courtney Cronin, DJ Moore, improving Bears image as wide receiver destination after signing his new contract extension. DJ Moore has signed a four-year, $110 million extension that will keep the star receiver on their contract through the 2029 season. The $27.5 million average per year will be the highest for any Bears player surpassing their current APY for Montez Sweat, which was at $24.7 million. And I want to quote this article from Courtney Cronin over at ESPN. DJ Moore improving Bears image as... Wide receiver destination. DJ Moore won't take the field Thursday night when the Chicago Bears play the Houston Texans in the Hall of Fame game in Cannon, Ohio, but his impact will be felt. Since he was acquired last year from the Carolina Panthers in a package for the number one draft pick, Moore has been an agent of change for the Bears. In one season, Moore changed the narrative coined by former Bears wide receiver Musa Muhammad in 2008 of Chicago being, quote, where receivers go to die. Moore put it together a career year with personal best of 96 receptions, 1,364 yards, and eight touchdowns, which were also team highs. The accomplishments came despite shaky quarterback play and passing offense that ranked 27th. As a result, Moore, also part of a change in philosophy by general manager Ryan Poles, who broke president Tuesday when he signed Moore to an extension with two years remaining on his deal. Since Poles was hired in 2022, Chicago has waited until players near the end of their deals before signing them to extensions, like tight end Cole Komet and defensive end Montez Sweat. In the case of cornerback Jalen Johnson, the Bears made him play out the final year of his rookie contract and earn second-team All-Pro honors before agreeing to a new mega deal. And Courtney continues on, the Bears have added offensive threats, including number one overall draft pick Caleb Williams at quarterback, Number nine pick, Roman Dunze, a wide receiver. Wide receiver, Keenan Allen, and running back, DeAndre Swift, were added to what should be a much improved offense. But expectations much translate to results, and that's why Moore provided to earn his extension as he gave the Bears something they haven't had in years, an elite wide receiver. I accomplished the contract part. Now we got to go out there and win, he said. And you can check out the entire article. It's another great read by Courtney Cronin over at ESPN.com. DJ Moore improving Bears image as wide receiver destination. So I think this move is brilliant by Ryan Poles. He took care of a player that has produced before he got to Chicago, has produced since he got to Chicago, and still has everything it takes to produce after this contract signing. You're talking about a 27-year-old. Just freshly turned 27-year-old elite wide receiver who is still, in some eyes, probably underpaid. Still making less money than Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Amon Ra, Tyreek Hill. Now, mind you, those players are, I would say, on the next tier. That very last top of the heap right there with Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup when he's healthy that tier. But DJ Moore is an elite wide receiver. And you got him on a good contract with a lot of good football left ahead of him. You've paid him for good 
for good football played already for your organization. And what DJ Moore means to your organization on and off the field is invaluable. He's beloved in the community. He's a good dude, an awesome father by all stories and and perception. And comes off as a genuine good guy and an amazing teammate and a gamer and a professional. He has set the tide for this organization. The ultimate role model. And look at, chances are Keenan Allen being brought in. An awesome move also, by the way, that just bolsters this this wide receiver room. Probably won't get re-signed by the Bears. But having somebody like DJ Moore there and Roman Deuce learning as a rookie under those two guys might make things more intriguing for wide receivers like Keenan Allen to stay, to stick around, to play with Caleb Williams if Caleb Williams is the dude, to carry them under their wings, that is Roman Dunes and Caleb Williams and some of these other young players on the Bears' offensive side and try to do something special. This was a smart move. This was also getting ahead of the curve. In the NFL, the worst thing you can do when you're having contract negotiations, is stall and wait and let time fly by. Because if that player continues to do what they do and perform and exceed expectations, all that means is that money is going to go up and you're losing the security and healthy years. On top of making things very much making tensions high, making there be some animosity because you're playing these contract negotiation games. Ryan Poles has made a lot of dumb moves, has made a lot of questionable moves. Ryan Poles has hit some grand slams. And what he did to bring in DJ Moore and everything that came with that trade will go down in not just Chicago sports history, Chicago Bears history, NFL history, as one of the greatest one-sided trades of all time. Especially if Caleb Williams is just an okay quarterback, a pro quarterback, a long-term quarterback. Doesn't even have to win a Super Bowl. Doesn't have to be a Hall of Famer. It's just a starting quarterback in the NFL, a respectable starting quarterback in the NFL. And DJ Moore is that totem is that anchor and it's just an awesome move to do it right now and I think they they knocked that out of the park so shout out to the Bears and shout out to DJ Moore for getting his money let us know your thoughts what do you think the Chicago Bears have extended and secured their elite wide receiver in DJ Moore we want to know your thoughts we're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV make sure you're subscribing to us on YouTube at the Sports Cubicle search us wherever you get your favorite podcast at Sports from the Couch the Sports Cubicle we're at Heartland Signal check us out over there at WCPT 8. 20 and thank you so much for supporting me and the book release lucha dog at amazon right now check it out lucha dog and visit us at luchadog.com we have a whole lot left on this edition of the sports cubicle i'm your host mike mercado